Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Welcome. I, can't, I think I'm going live um, right now to you um, during um, some some news. Um, I went. Um, I delayed this broadcast a little bit because of all what's been going on in Washington. And, um, yeah, it's one of those things right now that that's happening. Uh, you know, it, let's not, um, lose our heads. I hope everyone, um, regains their composure for those who are very upset. And, um, we could see, um, eye to eye on this. If we disagree, at least violence and, and other things um, don't occur. Um, so I've, I've really been kind of not watching the news, but watching, but not watching. And so I decided to come on a little bit later today just so, yeah, just to catch a few of the things that are happening. Um, so anyway, but I, I just wanted to address that really quick before I start. And it's kind of interesting because um, the, the work that I want to discuss um, sort of maybe echoes some of the things that are happening um, in our world right now, or particularly in the U.S. Um, and if you're watching this from outside of the U.S., welcome. Uh, it's unfortunate that what is happening in the U.S. Uh, is happening, and so, you know, it's been embarrassing, to be quite honest, and, um, you know, and I want to apologize on behalf of the U.S. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so uh, getting back to Woodblock Wednesday, a uh, welcome. And um, today's print that I'd like to discuss isn't actually a woodblock print. It's a stencil by an artist. His name is Yoshitoshi Mori. And um, Yoshitoshi Mori is an interesting um, artist. He, he started off his career as a, a textile, uh, in the textile industry. He would make stencils and basically worked on kimonos and other types of textiles. Um, and um, that training was actually kind of um, important because he used that experience to produce his prints. In fact, um, he was actually a stencil um, um, textile artist for most of his life. I think he, was, he started making prints in, when he was in his 50s. So that should give us all hope as well as aspiring artists that, you know, there's a lot of artists that did not really um, come into their own until well, pretty much late in life. And Yoshitoshi Mori is a fantastic artist. Um, I think he's kind of overlooked. And, and so I hope that today's video kind of addresses that and, and, sh and really highlights a really wonderful work. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's go to the table and have a look. So I'm going to move my light a little bit so that we could... Um, enjoy the print with a little bit more light. Let's see. I think that's... Sorry, I'm trying to do move the light with one hand and hold the, the phone on the other. So what we have here is a very large, and I'll step back a little bit so you could see the whole print, a very large stencil print by Yoshitoshi Mori. Uh, Yoshitoshi Mori was uh, born... Uh, you know, I should have written his dates down, but he was born around 1893, and he passed away, I believe, in the in the 70s. So he lived a long life, maybe even 80s. So he lived a long life, and um, he, as I said, he um, started working when he was in his 50s, making um, stencil prints, and he used his experience making stencils for kimonos in the production of his prints. And we'll get into uh, the, the, the way that these prints are cr uh, created in a moment. I just want to kind of show the, the image of this print. First of all, the design um, is titled The Raising of the Temple of Todaji. And for those of you who have traveled to Japan and gone to Nara to visit this temple, it's kind of astonishing to know that this amazing Buddha, this bronze Buddha that is in Todaji, was housed in wooden structures that were destroyed previously. I think it happened at least like two times, if not more. And the last occurrence happened in the 1300s. Um, and it was during a very turbulent um, time in Japanese history, um, before 
um, the unification and a peaceful um, unification of Japan. Of course, it was unified by a warlord, but nonetheless, at this time, there were it was basically warring states, uh, warring fractions of families, and this particular scene shows these, you know, basically military um, people. They're basically, you know, samurai. Uh, this is, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if they were considered samurai at the time, but they're definitely, um, foot soldiers. They have arrows, they have swords, just like what samurais would, um, have. And they're basically all around the temple structure and they're burning it down. And it, it is an incredible scene. I mean, it's a very powerful design where you have this Buddha. And for those of you who've been to um, Todaji, it is the largest wooden structure, a temple structure on earth. It is huge. And there's a big bronze Buddha. And this is the Buddha um, of Todaji. And, and he's actually falling forward um, because the, the entire structure is engulfed in flames. It's, and there's a really interesting sort of counter, um, sort of the counterpart to the to the, the this violence of flames and in and, and these warriors sort of destroying the structure is the Buddha's hand gesture. It it is this peaceful, contemplative, kind of find your center sort of you know mudra is hand um, sort of positioning inviting the visitors who come to the temple to sort of connect to their center and and connect to a stillness and 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 to connect to a peace and yet it, it is this really interesting juxtaposition between that peaceful contemplative um, um, pose that the Buddha is inviting um, you know, people to to experience versus the these warriors that are destroying the temple. I mean, it, it is it's interesting. And it, the other thing that I, I I find this this scene is interesting is it it shows a, a, a very important scene in J Japan's history, and it it really talks about the the these the the. The thing that's in humans that w would go out and 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 seek a seek destruction of a beautiful temple, that you know we, we I'm sure all of these warriors that are destroying the temple have been to the temple, have seen the temple, maybe even participated in rituals in and around the temple, and yet because of a warring issues with another family with the with the 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 land um ownership of the time who knows what really caused this one particular um issue but the point is they're destroying it they're destroying the wooden structure and it sort of reminds me of what's happening um in in the US and so um that's one of the reasons I'm bringing this print um, um to our conversation today because art gives us a sense to reflect on history and it also is instructive because it shows us that you know all of the things that have happened in the past can in fact happen even now in our modern time as as advanced as we think we are with all our gadgets and with our science the the those primal instincts that are in all of us still emerge and still bubble up and cause a lot of conflict and stress and trauma and so I, I think this image really speaks to that experience that we're, we're, we're currently living in, and it's nothing new. It's nothing new. And I think Yoshitoshi Mori, um, as an artist, really um, showcases this dualistic um, sort of aspect of, of, of basically humanity, of what it is to be human. And, and of course, the Buddha was human. Um, and, and um, you know, some Buddhists even would argue that he is n he's not a god. He is just a teacher that um, wanted to show us the way. And so we have an enlightened being in, in, in this sculpture, you know, giving us the sort of a, a hint of how to live our life with this sort of balance and, and quiet and, and this mudra or the hand positioning that encourages the stillness. And yet... We have these military, um, you know, members of the military, these warriors, basically destroying the, the, the structure 
that houses the invitation to the stillness. It's, um, it's poetic, it's sad, it's potent, it's powerful. It's all of these things all in one. And with any great art, you, you, know, you, you have that. You have all of these wonderful aspects um, coming together and in, in creating an image that provokes um, emotions and thoughts and encourages a dialogue um, ongoing, not necessarily just when it, it was created, but it stands the test of time in these questions and these comments by the artist and, and the things that provokes c continues and, and so on. This print, by the way, it was done in 1973. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was born in 75, so this is a little older than I am. So we're talking about 47 years old, and the, the print looks so fresh. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, but anyway, let's get into the, the production. The, the print was created with a stencil as opposed to a woodblock print, which means the artist cut out portions of the, of the design um, and it looked exactly what you would imagine. It, it's a stencil that would cut out all of the... So the black um, is one part of a stencil. The color is another stencil. So it's like a woodblock print in the sense that each block creates the color or the aspect of the design. But um, Mori, instead of carving wood blocks, was car was cutting out um, the design with scissors, and and so that that's the only difference. And the stencil he used was actually very robust, and 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 so you could get it wet with pigment, and he he'd apply it directly onto the the paper, and he apply the pigment onto the paper, and the pigment was applied by hand. And so on Yoshitoshi Mori prints, particularly the larger ones, you see the color's not even. And he expl you know, he's doing this to sort of give you a sense of the flame. And some parts of the flame are hotter than other parts. And so you get the really deep reds here and the lighter reds here. And this area is, is almost pink. But the, here above here, you get red. That's all done by hand. And each impression is different. Um, I, I actually had two copies of this print um, recently and I sold one and the red, the, the flames were done very different from this one. And even um, the bronze color, the Buddha looked a little bit different. And this is all because of Mori's hand applied pigments and he sort of adjusted the color as he went along. And so each print is really a unique work um, of art. So the colors he used, obviously, is the black, the brown, the bronze color. They're, these soldiers, these warriors are, are white, so they're actually printed white, as opposed to the white of the paper, which is um, a different color. Um, and you could kind of see the texture of the paper. It's handmade paper, so you could see the, the fibers of the paper coming through. Mori used really wonderful paper. And, of course, the red... And here's his seal. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna zoom in, stop talking for a moment so you can enjoy the design. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful design, really beautiful, very powerful. And I said it, it it's also somber. It, it's it shows a kind of a dark period in Japan's history. Now, the good news, um, and there's always good news, is that this was rebuilt. And the last time it was rebuilt, I think it was after this happened in the 1300s. And when it was rebuilt, it became the largest wooden structure in the world. 
I don't think that at the time of this, um, uh, of the burning of this uh, version of the temple, that the the wooden sort of structure that housed the Buddha was as large. So they rebuilt it on a larger, more grander scale. So that's kind of neat, knowing that we as humans and and can do that, can rebuild and and learn from our past mistakes. And so Todaji is a uh, is one of the world's treasures of of architecture and of Buddhist art. And um, I encourage all of you who have not traveled to Japan to go to Japan when when it's we're able to, and and when it's safely um, um, when we're safely able to travel, um, and then um, you know travel to Nara. Nara is a, a city in Kansai that is near Kyoto. It's a day trip from Kyoto. It takes it takes maybe a little less than an hour on on the local trains to get to Nara, and um, it's a beautiful temple. It's a beautiful temple complex. It's not just one um, um, temple um, sort of dedicated to this one, um, uh, you know, the, the bronze Buddha, but there's all these other temples all around. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, um, little town. So I, I would encourage all of you to to visit and, and see this Buddha in person. Um, and if you've been there, you know how big it is and how beautiful and the the, just the grand scale of it all, and it's amazing to think that 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 Buddha was caught up in this kind of, you know, in this commotion, in this chaos, and and so this print is really interesting because it it commemorates that period in Japanese history, uh, and then it also provides a really powerful image. That, as I said earlier in my conversation with you, that, you know, it kind of invokes of what is happening in our world now. And unfortunately, it will remind us in the future of future things that will come up because we, we're the, the kind of um, beings that need these reminders. And I think art is a wonderful way of being cognizant of these things. So sorry if I sound a little preachy today. I'm just kind of... Um, responding to to the u.s uh news that are happening today so and and you know i thought i'd pull this print out and discuss it so um i'm gonna uh again zoom in so you can enjoy the print one last time One last thing about the print, it's a, I wouldn't give you a sense of scale. It takes up most of my table. Um, this table's about, I don't know, eight feet long. So it, it's quite large. I, I, you could put maybe four Oban size prints on one half and another four on the other. Maybe, maybe, maybe three, the way that you configure them on each side. So it's six to eight Oban size prints. Uh, um, that would make up the s uh, size of the paper. So it's a very large, powerful work by Mori. And so a lot of people ask me about contemporary artists. And I, I mean, when I use the term contemporary, it refers to artists that are actually alive, working actively now, or artists that were working in the last you know, within the last 50 years. And so, you know, Mori was active up until like, I think, you know, I think he passed away in the 90s, if I think about it. Um, and he was very active, but the 70s were, were a really great period for him. He created a lot of wonderful designs that are just powerful and, and bold and, and thought provoking. And this is certainly one of them. I, I'd say this is one of my favorite prints and in the top I don't know, to, I would say in the top five designs that he produced, um, quite frankly. Um, and um, in, 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 by and large, most of those designs, by the way, are the larger scale prints. So if you're interested in Mori and you want to collect some of his top designs, you're going to really focus on his larger scale prints because they're, they're the, probably the best designs um, in terms of not just the 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 potency because of the scale but also the design quality i think he would really hit a 
his stride and, and was at the peak of his power. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share that with you for those uh, connoisseurs of Maury's work. So I want to thank you. Oh, I've got the bright light in my eyes. I'll move it over. So I want to thank you for joining me uh, at our, our latest installment of Woodblock Wednesday. And I just want to give you a little preview uh, that we have some wonderful plans uh, for the website. We have an upcoming exhibition and about a month and a half of new material. But um, I want to point out that we're also going to have um, a sale of some prints that were consigned to me. Um, and so it's a consignment sale. Um, and so they're going to be prints that are discounted. Um, you don't normally see that, um, particularly for art galleries. And, and so, and, you know, it's a nice group of prints that were consigned that with, with, a, with a, a discounts in mind. So that's going to go up in about a week. So if you want to learn about this, uh, go to my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, sign up for our email. And you'll get all of the information coming um, for our exhibitions. I also will start a new feature. So if you sign up for our emails, you're going to get something called weekly art installments. And basically, it's an email that will come out every week where we discuss uh, some aspect of Japanese prints or paintings. So kind of like a mini Woodblock Wednesday, but in written form uh, via your email. So if you, that's something you're interested in, you want to receive uh, that email, please go to our website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, and click on the top where it says email. You just it, it, submit your email um, and to our list, and it's as simple as that, and you'll be getting our emails. So I encourage you to do that. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Until then.